Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to show you how to build yourself an underground secret lab. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. Starting off with where you actually want your lab. I recommend putting it in a basement or something and then having a staircase going down. This basement here is from my spooky cottage. Of course, it's my last video, so, you know, I'm going to draw inspiration from it. But basically, what you want to do is have a staircase. I chose some nice cobbled deep slate because it mixed in with my existing deep slate floor. You can, of course, adjust the palette as need be. And you can see for the walls, I have a gradient, starting with tough, going to stone, and then cobblestone. And then I go down with it. Ironically, this means I can actually leave a lot of the walls intact without having to do as much work. So if you can, try doing that. You can even weave in the ores, but that might break a little bit of immersion, so perhaps not. Either way, going down with the broken pattern, and you might want to make little holes in the wall to stick things like lanterns and such. Or candles, something to light up the place without lighting it up too much. If you use things like lanterns too often, then it kind of ruins the vibe. You want it to be kind of dark and spooky. I mean, it is a secret lab. There's going to be some weird experiments, some that might violate the Geneva Convention, who knows. So essentially, you want to make sure that it's kind of dim in there. Of course, using night vision for viewing purposes. Right here, you can see, well, I have the staircase. These little indents here with the candles, a little bit of damage with stairs, but only on one side. If you want, you can add a bit more, and thanks to 121 increasing cobweb availability, you might want to include some of those too. Now, a little bit more damage here, cobwebs, insufficient lighting, which is sufficient, and what do you know, I now have a nice staircase going down. From here, what you want to do is create an established dividing area, as in, you didn't go straight into the lab from here. Not only will you want to do something different for the floor, such as planks or checkerboard tile, well, you also really just want to have an opportunity to change your entire palette if need be. Especially if you have something a little bit too cozy. I mean, hypothetically, you don't even have a basement. What if you're just in here and had to go straight to secret lab? It would be a little bit jarring without making it a completely separate room. So what I recommend is making a tiny room here doesn't really need much in it, maybe some dark oak trapdoor shelves with various supplies on it like sea pickles, and then you put down stone bricks, a door, and what do you know, a separate dividing area. Right here, you can see I now have an area at the bottom. There's a nice copper bulb up here, along with adding diorite to this wall gradient in order to make it more interesting and realistic. Then I have two shelves in the decorated pot which are decorated with assorted items that in reality don't make much sense, but I don't want people to acknowledge that. Hence, I'm going to be moving on. In this room, it is quite dark. Anyways, I'm going to turn on night vision, and you can see this is going to be a bit more of a bunker room. Every other block, I'm going to have a pillar in this room. And then, said pillars are going to go up to the middle, like this. It doesn't matter if it's even or odd. In fact, for something I want to do, it would probably be better if it was even. And then, once you go to the middle, go to the other side and repeat the same thing. And here's how you do it. Four blocks tall, of course, measurements can change. And then you do a stair, do a block, a stair, block, and what do you know, we're already at the top. So, with this now in place, add stone in order to make it look like the roof isn't completely finished. If need be, you can even leave some areas completely bare. Maybe even some ores, dripstone, etc. Essentially, don't have a nice fancy roof. This is a mad scientist lab, like he's going to concern himself with things like roof security, when of course he's making monsters that are more of a threat than the lab collapsing on him. Yeah, he's more likely to uh, get chemicals on himself or turn himself into a mutant, so the ceilings are the least of his worries. So essentially, don't try making nice ceilings. If you want, you might want to make a little cutout here with stairs in order to make it a smooth transition. And in here, I'm going to keep a ravager to be that scary monster, mutant, whatever. I mean, it looks kind of like a villager from the front. So you have that going for it. 
So if you can somehow isolate a Ravager from a raid, go ahead and try trapping one. Good luck! Right here, you can see I have my morally ambiguous Ravager pen, complete with some lime glass. You know, can't have any clean energy in here, it needs to be derived from nuclear waste, and specifically the bad stuff. Then, I have the cauldron with the swap water and, and then a little bit of hay, small pen, perfectly fine for our Ravager princess. And anyways, you can see it's kind of dark in here, and sometimes it's a little too dark. What you want to do is avoid using lots of lanterns. You can use soul lanterns, but personally it's a little too easy to go complete deep slate skulk aesthetic. You can see here, I did some nice checkerboard flooring with some tuff and deep slate. And yeah, it's fine to use deep slate, I strongly encourage it. But overusing it can get really boring really quick. Anyways, with these little segments here, you can make a little test tubes, make sure to add proper lighting. And then, if there's a whole wall, you can make a little cutout. Kinda like how this is a Ravager pen, maybe you want to have some end crystal experiments. You know, tempt fate with your less than stable friends, you know, the ones that uh, have trouble not hitting left click or every single button in a 50 mile radius, that kind. For the lighting, I recommend copper bulbs, specifically the exposed kind, but weathered and completely oxidized are good options too. And then of course the ceiling. Nothing too interesting, there's a few too many support beams, but I personally like it that way. And then, once you're done with this, you'll want to go another floor down. Kind of like how I have the staircase here that goes down to this, well, probably build another one of those with this secret lab's palette. Right here, you can see this room's a lot more decorated. And what I did was a few simple additions. First off, I added a lever and a button to the end crystal area. Which is, by the way, now complete. If you're wondering how I got the end crystals over a block that isn't obsidian, well, all you need to do is mine the block from the bottom. End crystals have large hitboxes, but they don't cover the bottom of the block they're on, which means you can safely replace it as long as you're careful not to accidentally uh, blow water the entire place up. And fortunately, they do not cause chain reactions in the case that you accidentally do hit one. Now, I have a little bit of curvature in there, a little bit of the oxidized version, princess is still waiting around for something, I don't know. Then I have a little computer here, more copper and such, we have a lever, you know, weird computer on button, and I have a keyboard here, which is actually an armor stand with a chainmail helmet that I used a piston, or set block command, it's up to you, in order to cram a chiseled copper block onto its head, which makes it look like a keyboard. Simple table here, nothing else to say. Some pipes going around. No reason to really talk about those. And then I have a few brewing stands and nether wart. And the real thing about this is the fact that, well, different flooring, the walls busted open. Yeah, this chemist really has a hard time not making things explode. Fun chemistry lesson. Don't combine cesium and water. It will make a very large explosion. This scientist didn't know that. Anyways, Right here, you can see I have some creepers, test tubes, you know, in case you ever needed to turn on the bubble elevator and send them to the surface because, you know, you have to contribute to the global monster crisis. And now, I have this place nicely kitted out. From here, technically this lab would be complete, but I'd say take it a step further. I'm going to have another room with a large staircase, of course, more night vision, and this is going to use a gradiented ground. And quick note, this is not my first secret lab. My last one was rushed and thus wasn't of the best quality, but here's what I mean. Right here, you can see how I space out these lime stained glass wires. And then this causes a fog effect, which means if you're standing from the correct position, something right about here, well, you're not gonna see the bottom. Even though I don't have connected textures in order to maintain the vanilla experience, you can see how this would work out. And personally, I'd say it's a really good addition, which means if you have the necessary resources, I'd strongly recommend that. Anyways, back to the build. Try incorporating that gradient thing I was showing and another layer. And who knows, you can turn it into an entire fortress if need, if need be. But for our, our purposes, I'm going to have only one extra room because of course I don't want to delay it because 
you know, Genius Me is recording this at 10 p.m. on a Monday night. Right here, you can see I have a new room behind here, and I decided to add redstone torches. I may or may not have updated my version in Lost Access to World Edit because of these torches, so uh, I hope you like them. Now inside this room, you'll notice something. It is quite dark. And yeah, you can see on the ceiling, I have some water dripping down. This is meant to be an airlock that, well, you shower off after going from that area. Which, by the way, is still too dark. Yeah, that's a recurring theme with this build. But anyways, you can see here, kind of dark. You might want to substitute some of your copper bulbs for the weathered ones, since they look very similar and are quite a bit lighter. So, grab yourself the debug stick, or really just any means of redstone power. Do that, and then it'll be a lot more tolerable. Down there, there's mud. I just chose mud because I like it. And it's cheap. And you can see here, now it's a little bit brighter. For here, I'm going to have myself the actual pit of green. And the green pit is going to be at this layer here. I'm going to make sure that there is a proper transition using stairs here. You might want to put some glass here too. So something like this. It can be panes if you want. But, you know, just to keep the mad scientist safe. I mean, he's already blown up a lot of things with those brewing stands. Best to not fall into a pit of the mysterious. And now what you want to do is start excavating the pit. I recommend maybe 14, 15 blocks deep. It can change depending on your resources, your time, etc. If you're in creative mode, should be pretty easy, especially if you have structure blocks. In this room, you can see I have the staircase tinted glass on this side. A little bit of a connecting area here, along with another one of those weird computers. Maybe a little vault door. If you want, you can connect it to another piece of the build if you have the option to. And from here, what I recommend doing is adding an overhang. No need to add glass. Does this look like an OSHA regulated area? Anyways, for the pit itself, I didn't add any of those layers yet. Instead, I textured the walls and then gave it a gradient going from black concrete powder to black stone to tough. I personally like this, and I'm going to keep it like that. And from here, exactly what I said I was going to do earlier. Wow, I, I actually never looked at the new bundles yet. Wow, those are really pretty. Anyways, I recommend getting out some verdant frog lights and spacing them out randomly. Make sure that they're facing upward, and then this way you keep it nice and glowy at the bottom. And if you want, you might want to do this individually for each layer. So now that I turn off my night vision, say I start placing down my layers, you know, it can get a little dark towards the top. I prefer just to glow the whole way through and not rely on outside lighting. Maybe I could add a piece here, make sure it's facing up. And now it almost looks like it has little bubbles coming off of it. Keep a bunch of these layers intact, and what do you know, it'll be a lot more interesting. Right here, you can see that I have the magical green pit completed. And I even have a railing, so that way this does not break federal law. Now, you can see in here, nothing too interesting besides the magical green stuff is going in. From, a uh, something. I don't know where it's coming from. For the flickering lights, I have a simple redstone back here, you know, making sure this video has some sort of flashing lights warning on it. And then, from here, another light, you know, diagnostic things. For anything you don't know what to do, black concrete works pretty well. It's not like anyone really needs to know what's going on back there. And then I have a control desk up here, more random redstone stuff. No care put into what I'm adding here. And what do you know, you can't even see the diagnostic panel from here, making sure this lab is as safe as possible. For the ceiling, more copper bulbs and copper. Nothing right to say. For the sides here, I included tinted glass, because it just looked cooler. From here, it's up to you. Do you want to do cages or other things lining the walls, more weird copper things? Up to you. Essentially, lots of miscellaneous things to fill up the walls, and maybe even a solid block to go here. Something kind of what's going on in here, maybe more test tubes, who knows. Why did my creepers disappear? But anyways, with that in mind, well, it's time to finish the build. There's nothing left to really say besides finish your walls, maybe add some extra rooms if you want, and if need be, 
you can have a door that goes nowhere. You can see, it kind of looks like a vault door. And in reality, it would probably be the way you are supposed to get the Ravager in there. But I'm going to be honest, I think I've gotten the point across on how to build your secret lab. For these walls, you can see I've added some pipes to them. And I added even more pipes to the middle here. The more pipes, the better, actually. And you can see how this really, well, finishes the build. And then for these corner areas, I did a little bit of explanation to what could really be going on. And it's up to you if you want to tell the story with your lab. Up here, you can see there's a bunch of skulk with some blue glass covering it. But some of it's black, and it looks like cracks. So, uh, you know what that's going to mean. Skulk overflow. And because of those little bubbles down there, well, you can assume this is experience, and this is some sort of experience factory, and these are little vending machines for it. And this one's out of commission. But anyways, the idea here is that I told a little bit of a story. It wasn't even planned at all. I mean, this is also how literature works. See, me trying to write a book. But anyways, yeah, you can tell a little story with your lab, and it really adds a lot. And with this, maybe add a few cobwebs, and add some cracks to the floor, and what do you know, you have a completed secret lab. And you can see around here, it's not actually that large, but it might seem kind of large. But still, if you cram in a lot of detail, you can make a really interesting lab. And who knows, it could be your secret base, could be a little thing for roleplay, who knows. But it's an interesting build nonetheless. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, Please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw, out.